So on the bench here I have all three components of a typical cabinet lock, the lock cylinder, the key and the bayonet lock. In this video I'll show you how these three components work together or interlock with each other or how this lock works in the first place. So let's start with this bayonet lock. This is simply bolted to the one of the drawers and has a tailpiece. This tailpiece rotates half a turn down and half a turn up all it does and as is it doesn't need a key so how is this going to lock anything as the tailpiece is rotated down the tailpiece goes through a uh, bar that's being pushed vertically down when the tailpiece is down and when it's up the bar is lifted up and as the bar is pushed vertically down it stops the drawers from sliding out and as the tail is up the bar is up then the drawers can all be pulled out so that's the function of this tailpiece on this bayonet lock now how does this work with the lock cylinder how is this lockable on the inside you'll see three channels and the horseshoe shape well either this way horseshoe or whichever way you like looking at life and that matches this lock cylinder the horseshoe shape in this orientation they match this way on the lock cylinder you'll also see a bunch of spring loaded metal plates especially the spring is prominent on this first one but they are all springy and Another feature, you can see the springs nice in this nice light down there through that corner. And when these spring plates are pushed by the springs to one side, they are withdrawn from the other side. So in normal operation, when a key is inserted, what happens to these spring plates is this. So this is the matching key for it. This one, all of these have a number this is t699 and here is the key for it t699 so when the key is inserted this is what happens to the push plates they go up and down a little bit but eventually they end up flush with the body of this lock set just the right amount on both sides when I take the key out these fall and rise in different patterns as the zigs and zags of the key is pushing these spring plates up and down but the key idea is that these spring plates here be flush with the body of the cylinder so it can be rotated inside this bayonet housing you can see the spring plates either are extended towards the top or extended towards the bottom and when the spring plates are extended as in the key is fully withdrawn or the key is only partially inserted like so then some of the spring plates will stop the rotation of this lock set inside the housing and therefore with the engagement of the horseshoe shapes at the end will also stop the rotation of the tailpiece so as long as these spring plates are sticking up then this key is not gonna work when the spring plates one of them is sticking up it will only work when the key is fully pushed in and all the spring plates here are flush now to put the key in I'm gonna need a different kind of key and we'll line it up there's one other feature here this tab this or this index pin on the side of this lock cylinder and in this position of this uh, key all of these spring plates are withdrawn into the body of this lock cylinder and can be inserted with this side pin lining up into the side channel the narrowest channel 
there and then rotate it 180 degrees I'm just turning the tailpiece correctly nope other way was correct there and then it's simply just turn so when i come back with the key that unlocks it and uh, opens it or unlocks it and blocks it so the key goes in all of the spring plates inside are withdrawn or extended to the same even position and the horseshoe shape keeps the lock cylinder and the lock body this is housing together and this tail piece is rotated now the last piece this is where this master key comes in and then the last item to mention that the master key operates is this last spring plate there that is only depressed this last one with this master key because with the normal key only these spring plates are engaged with the key and only these ones are flush with the body of the cylinder the last one is not this last spring plate that last spring plate runs in a groove that's way down there inside this uh, housing or this uh, bayonet lock uh, housing and uh, you can see the groove for it all around so that's what that groove the groove function is uh, with the normal key inserted this last spring plate here keeps the lock set in place inside the lock housing so it can't be put in or removed from the lock set with this key it needs uh, this particular master key where the master key works with all the other spring plates and the last one there so it has to be long enough for that and they go together rotate 180 degrees like so and then it works with the key so that's how these uh, which way is it this way so that's how that's how the cylinder lock and the housing and this tailpiece interlock with each other and work together to open or lock a filing cabinet.